What happened with you and Annie? Stay out of it, Kyle. You don't know what you're talking about. I'm gonna go make sure she's okay. No, it's between her and me. How's it going? What's going on, Logan? Jeff in Vegas. Nice to meet you, man. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Thanks for talking to me today. No, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Really excited. Like my background? I think that's you on your farm. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Yeah, that's uh, it's one of our little calves we have. How's yellow doing? How, how's what? How's yellow doing? Yellow is doing great. Uh, still kicking it. Still <laughs> our, our best horse we have, the calmest one. Actually, I rode him, I think, yesterday. Uh, I was just on the, you know, a little ranch, riding them and having a fun time. I can't imagine being in quarantine in a better place than on a family farm in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> it's so much fun. There's always something going on with all the cows and the horses. Uh, well, let's talk about some of your projects. Um, you know, you played Kyle in the Netflix series, Sweet Magnolias. It ended in a cliffhanger. So are fans trying to get you to talk? <laughs> they really are. Um, and believe it or not, we don't know anything else. We just know as much as you guys know at the end. We don't know what's going on with the, the big uh, ending, which I don't think I can speak about on here. Um, but it's pretty crazy. And, you know, hopefully, fingers crossed for a season two, because I want to know too. Everybody else wants to know. Nobody in the cast knows what's going on, but the writers do, and they won't tell us. So that kind of bothers us a little bit. So we're wanting a season two, and hopefully Netflix will give us one. And, and of all your acting jobs, how has it been your experience on Sweet Magnolias? Has it been a rewarding experience? It's been one of the best experiences I've ever had. I mean, the entire cast and crew, they were so organized and so nice. I mean, I really couldn't have asked to work with, with better people. Um, you know, we really became like a, a big family. You know what I mean? Four months of filming a show, you know, almost every single day, you know, straight. So um, it was crazy, but it was really fun. And we all became very close. We're still on in contact today. Um, and I think, you know, our relationships in real life, kind of transfer, you know, to the screen. And you can see, you know, that we really do have that chemistry. And I think that's a big part of the show's success. So, yeah. And I assume everyone's on pins and needles because you're waiting for Netflix to tell you if there's a season two? <laughs> we're, we're hoping so. We, uh, we're re we really are on pins and needles. Uh, we're just waiting, waiting for that phone call, hopefully soon. And uh, you appeared in Creep Show, And when I was your age, that was my movie when it came out. Now I'm showing my age. Yeah. Uh, but I just adore that. And are you a horror fan? Is that what are you attracted to do to Creep Show? Or I am such a big horror fan. Like you said, the old Creep Show movies. I'm a big Halloween fan, Nightmare on Elm Street, all those types of uh, Scream too. Um, so I'm a big horror fan, and I got to work with Greg Nicotero and David Bruckner, who are very big in the horror community, and I love them so much. I got to work with a lot of the Walking Dead crew, which is awesome, and I even got to meet a lot of the Walking Dead cast at the screening for Creep Show. Like, Norman Reedus and all them were there, and I, like, I fanboyed a little bit. I'm not going to lie. It was the coolest experience ever, and just that was such a fun set to be on because, like I said, I'm such a big horror fan, and I've never done a horror project before. Um, so it was a whole new experience to me, but I had such a fun time. You know, there was a, a it was a beautiful set. I mean, beautiful. You had the fog roll in by the barn. Uh, you had the creepy scarecrow thing, and uh, it was just a real fun experience. Uh, I got to interview Greg and Catero last year at, at Universal Studios Halloween Horror Nights in L.A., and he's restoring or has restored Bruce the shark from Jaws, and it's, he's putting it in the Academy Museum. And uh, so I, I, Jaws is like my favorite movie and he was restoring the only known mold from the shark. So it looks fantastic. He's such a great guy. Oh, he really is. And he was so nice and we had such a fun time on set and just so creative and just his way of thinking when it comes to filming is something else. I mean, seriously, the guy's very, very talented. Like he's a very nice guy. All right. Two recommendations. Uh, Killer Clowns from Outer Space. You got to watch. I don't know if you've seen that yet. Yep. You yep. have seen it? Okay. How about oh, Motel, yeah. Motel Hell? Have you seen that? I have not. Okay. You're going to watch Motel Hell and get back to me and tell me what you thought of it because it's like my favorite horror film. Sounds good, man. <laughs> uh, so you grew, up, you grew up in Central Florida. So are you a Disney World guy or a Universal Studios guy? My dad uh, worked at Universal for about 10 years. So we would always go to Universal. But I, I love all the theme parks. Disney, you have Universal, uh, you know, you have Busch Gardens all here in, in, in the Central Florida area, uh, Legoland too. So, I mean, I, I'm definitely more of a Universal guy, mainly because, you know, there's bigger rides there. You have the Hulk, you have Rip Ride Rocket. Uh, I love the Mummy too. There's some great rides there. And like I said, my dad worked there for 10 years. So we got free tickets that would go there like every week. <laughs> So are you spend a lot of time on social media? Are you addicted to it? 
Yeah, it's, it's sad to say I am, but I am. Uh, specifically Instagram. I am on it a lot. Um, I'm, I'm post every single day when it comes to stories or on my feed. Um, so yeah, uh, Twitter, Instagram, it's Logan Allen is my username. So you guys can go ahead and follow me there with some uh, cool little BTS of Sweet Magnolias sometimes. Uh, some cool uh, Instagram live videos, which I do with some of the other casts. So it's really fun. And I'm a little brother in my family, but you're a big brother in your family. Uh, does your siblings uh, take up a lot of your time, especially in quarantine? <laughs> yeah, um, you know, I think the quarantine, obviously, the circumstance is very, very sad. But at the same time, I think it's bringing up, you know, the families together more. You know, I'm spending a lot of time with them, playing different games with them, uh, watching different shows with them, which is really fun. Um, so I have been spending a lot of time with them, and we definitely have gotten a lot closer, which I am very happy of and very proud of. So. Um, yes, I have been uh, been spending a lot of time with them and hanging around a lot. And can you recall your very first job in front of the camera? Was it a commercial or a movie? What was it? Um, so if we're talking like from the first thing, I think the first thing was a Bell's photo shoot for a magazine. You know how the, like in Bell's when you walk in, they have like the the little things on the wall of the pictures and the people in the outfits. I was that was my first ever thing I did, and I remember too. I was like, all right, so I was like. I have to smile, right? So I was telling myself, and I was like, like seven or eight. I was like, I gotta smile. And I remember, like, I remember talking to the uh, the photographer guy, and like, I would not drop my smile. Like, I was talking like this, I was doing this. It was it was so funny. But um, the Bell's photo shoot was my first ever thing I did, uh, like ever. Like, and I remember just like it was yesterday. I was so nervous, but um, after that, you know, um, I knew this is like what I wanted to do. I really had a fun time. And then my first ever big thing was in 2015 on a Nickelodeon show called Salia in the Kitchen. And I think about three scenes into filming that show, I knew that this is what I wanted to do in life. Like this was my passion. I really enjoyed it because uh, it was my first time like being a character and having fun, you know, more, you know, uh, uh, I don't know, just being more creative with it and just kind of expanding a little more into the, the, you know, whole business. So, well, like you said, you've been on Nickelodeon shows, you've, you've worked with dolphins before, and now you're getting older. Is there like a dream role you want to play now that you're getting older? You know what, man? Like we were just talking about, anything horror, like, okay, so I would love to be in like the Halloween franchise, the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise, Scream, uh, Friday the 13th, anything like that. Anything horror, I would love to do because um, I'm just such a big fan of that genre. I've been, you know, You got to hit up Jason stuff. Blum, you know, Blumhouse. I'm sure he casts you in something. Yes. Real Blumhouse. Yes, they, they're starting to get all the rights to all these big companies. So, yeah. And it's a universal yeah. connection. It's also Universal Studios. He works for there. You got a legacy there. There you go. So, we got already connection there. That would be so cool. I love Blumhouse, and a lot of their movies, too, are amazing. Um, so, yeah, definitely. Jason Blum, you know where to find me. <laughs> <laughs> well, Logan, thanks so much for talking to me today. And uh, you seem like you're, you're busy, and uh, I'm sure you got a lot waiting in the fold once this quarantine is over. And uh, thanks so much for talking to me. Good luck with. Uh, uh, season two of Sweet Magnolias. I feel it's going to happen for you. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. And you stay safe and have a good one. All right. Thanks a lot. All right.